Hey guys, it is Pastor Randy here with Made Free Church. I hope you guys are having a great morning. I know I am. And, uh, you know, whether you're joining us on Facebook or tuning into our YouTube channel or listening to us on one of our awesome plat uh, podcasting platforms, I want to welcome you guys to Made Free Church Online Bible Study. You know, today we embark on a journey into a timeless narrative of David and Goliath. Right. A story that has resonated through the ages and continues to inspire courage in the face of in seemingly insurmountable challenges. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just come before you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this time, Heavenly Father. And I just ask God that you just continue to do a mighty work, Heavenly Father. Lord, just get this lowly preacher out of the way and let your word go forward. Minister to us, Lord. Lord, we put on the full armor of God, which it says in Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, Lord. And we just ask that you rebuild the hedges of protection, the shields around us today, Lord. And we ask God that you continue to do a mighty, mighty work in us, God. And send your legion of angels down to fight for us and fight with us, Heavenly Father. Thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. All right. So, you know, as we dive into the passages of 1 Samuel, 17. I do want to uh, say a few things before we get started. Um, you know, we're in first Samuel chapter 17 verses 38 through 37. And, and, uh, uh, so if you guys want to, uh, open up your word there, that'd be great. Also guys, you know, our, if you guys want to check out what our beliefs are and who we are and stuff like that, you can go to madefreechurch.org. That's madefreechurch.org. Right. And, and go there and, and, and uh, we got a subscription button at the bottom of it. You can subscribe. We're going to be sending out new letters and stuff like that. So go subscribe, guys, and, 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 and to our on our website so we can send you out some really, really, really cool stuff that's happening. Also, guys, please pray for me uh, as I go, you know, Mondays, uh, Wednesdays, Thursdays and Fridays to go teach the guys at the discipleship home. It's really important if you guys pray for me for that. We said we have such a great time in the Bible study and it's so cool. So uh, pray for them, pray for the guys, man, and pray for me. Amen. And pray for pastor as well as 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 he's doing full time ministry and stuff like that. So pray for him as well. And guys, just, you know, it's it's is going to be a, a really, really, really cool time. So, um, you know, as we dive into the pages of first uh, Samuel 17. We encounter a tale of faith, bravery, and, and, and triumph of the underdog, right? The, the narrative of, of unfolds in the context of the great confrontation between the, the Philistines and the Israelites, right? You know, at, at the forefront of this clash stands a, 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 a huge, formidable giant named Goliath, a symbol of overwhelming giants that we, too, confront in our daily lives. It's a symbol. Goliath is a symbol for our daily lives, right? I'm not saying go put you, you, we're not David and we're not doing this. I'm saying it's a symbol of, of, of the giants that we confront. Amen. Amen. Never, ever put yourself in the context of scripture. You know what I mean? We weren't there. And I'm just saying that so you guys understand. And keep it in the context of the time and then, you know, find relevance, right? in it and, and and that's what we need to do you know so the 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 david and goliath story is not just merely a historical account it's a lesson with timeless relevance guys right you know at its core it's a narrative that of, of contrast the opposing might of goliath against an unsuming shepherd boy turned warrior david right and, and the natural order of thing goliath seems to that destined for victory right yet god's intervention through a humble shepherd changed the course of history, right? David's journey from, from the shepherd's fields to the battlefield is it, it, marked by his unwavering trust in God's providence, right? His refusal to don conventional armor of King Saul symbolizes a reliance on divine strength over human strategy, right? His choice speaks to the unconventional ways in which God often works in our lives, prompting us to trust in his plans when facing our own giants. In our contemporary context, the giants we face may, may, may not wield physical swords or shields, 
but they are no less daunting. You know, they could be fear, doubt, uncertainty, uh, or maybe uh, trials of life, maybe financial trials or, you know, uh, 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 physical and, and health trials. But the, the importance of facing these giants head on cannot be overstated, right? Each giant represents a challenge that when confronted with faith and courage becomes an opportunity for spiritual growth and the testament of the power of God. You know, as we navigate the complexities of our own lives, guys, we find ourselves standing before our own Goliaths, right? Be it personal struggles, addictions, alcoholism, societal pressures, right? Or uncertainties of an ever-changing world, right? The, the David and Goliath narrative teaches us that victory is not determined by our outward strength or worldly credentials, but by our unwavering faith in God's promises. So through this Bible study, you know, we aim to draw parallels between the challenges faced by the ancient Israel and those encountered by each one of us in, in the present day. You know, we, we, we seek to, to unravel the, the, the timeless truths embedded in this story and discover that they can guide us through our daily walk with Christ. So let us open our hearts and minds to the lessons that God has woven into the fabric of this narrative, trusting that, uh, that, that just as he empowered David to face his giants, he will equip us to confront ours. Right. So let us embark guys on this exploration together, armed with faith and hunger for God's word. Right. And, and may this study be a source of inspiration and encouragement as we learn to face our giants with the same confidence that David exhibited on that faithful day in the valley of Elah. So let's read today's scripture. We're going to be in verses, uh, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 38 through 37. So open up your Bibles there. I'll take a drink of water and all right. So verse 38 says, let's read today's scripture. So it says this, and then Saul clothed David with his armor and put on the helmet of bronze on his head and clothed him with the coat of mail. And David strapped his sword over his armor and he, he tried in vain to go for he was, for he had not tested them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot go with these for I have not tested them. So David put them off. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the, from the brook and had put them in his shepherd's pouch. His sling was in his hand as he approached the Philistine. And the Philistine moved toward and came near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. And, and when the Philistine took, looked and saw David, he disdained him for he was but a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. And the Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come with me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air, the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistines, you come to me with a sword and a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied in this day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel and that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves not with the sword and spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you unto our hand. Amen. Dude, those are some like uh, 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 meaty words, man. Like David's just going after. He's like, hey, look, dude, look, bro, you're not going to win this. You, you know, I'm going to cut off your head, dude. And I'm going to, I'm going to lay for the birds and, and the beasts of, of, of the earth is to come eat you up. And everybody's going to know that this happened, that the, the God of Israel did it. As he gives glory to God. Amen. So I, I love this. I love this story of David and Goliath, man. I, I, it's just, it's just, and tomorrow we're going to see just, we're going to get into the meat of it, man. And it's just going to be so amazing to see 
you know, so guys prepare for tomorrow, man, it's going to be awesome. So in the heart of the ancient conflict, right, between the Israelites and Philistines, we find ourselves in a pivotal moment in the Valley of Elah, right? You know, they, where, where the clash of the armies are intimate, the atmosphere charged with chances and the fate of the nations hangs in the balance. This setting lays the groundwork for the most iconic showdowns of biblical history, the confrontation between David and Goliath. You know, as we peer into the unfolding drama recorded uh, in, in verses 38 and 39, our attention is drawn, you know, to the preparations for battle, right? The seasoned warrior, King Saul, right? Clad in armor of his stature and status represents the embodiment of conventional wisdom, right? In the eyes of the world, victory in battle is often associated with strength or military might and the gleam of polished armor and clashing swords. King Saul, adhering to these worldly principles, offers his own armor to young David, intending him to equip him for the impending clash with, with, with the giant Goliath. Saul's armor undoubtedly crafted with skill and adorned with regality, right? It's a manifestation of traditional and, and the expected, the tried true methods of warfare, right? It symbolizes the human tendency to rely on what's visible, tangible, and culturally accepted. In Saul's armor, we witness the embodiment of societal norms, the conventional solutions that humanity instinctively turns to when faced with challenges. However, as the narrative unfolds, we see a, a, a remarkable contrast that emerges, right? David, a mere shepherd boy in the face, uh, faced with, with, with a choice that the defies conventional wisdom instead of succumbing to the expectations of the world he opts for the unconventional path of rejecting the heavy armor and sword that would have been a burden both physically and metaphorically david chooses to trust in god's ways right and in, in, in this seemingly insignificant decision lies lies a lesson for all of us right david's sling a simple and unassuming weapons becomes a symbol of his reliance on the divine strength over human capabilities. It's a tangible representation of his trust in the unseen, a testament to his faith in God's ability to guide and empower beyond the confines of conventional weaponry. David's unconventional choice challenges the notion that victory is solely contingent, is not solely contingent on worldly measures of strength and power. It teaches us that God's ways often transcends human understanding and his chosen instrument may defy societal expectations. The shepherd's boy decision to embrace his sling over Saul's armor underscores the importance of seeking God's guidance and relying on his wisdom, even when the world insists on conformity uh, to its established norms. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, in our own lives, you know, we, we often are presented with a choice between conventional and unconventional. The allure of worldly solutions, societal expectations and familiar paths can be strong. But David's story of David and Goliath encourages us to, to trust in God's ways, right? Which may lead us down an unexpected and unconventional avenues. Right. And as we navigate our own battles, you know, we, we, we need to reflect, you know, on on the simplicity of David's choice and the extraordinary impact it had on, on the course of history. You know, may, 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 may we find inspiration in in his trust, choosing to rely on God's ways, even when they appear unconventional in the eyes of the world. You know, in the, in the heart of the Valley of Elah. Right. Where, where tensions between the Israelites and the Philistines reaches its, 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 its zenith or its, its peak. Right. We witness a pivotal moment that, that captures the essence of David's unwavering confidence in God. You know, as we explore uh, verses 40 through 42, the narrative unfolds to reveal not only the physical preparation of the shepherd boy, but also the spiritual readiness that underpins his audacious stand against David, against uh, uh, the, the giant Goliath. 
sorry, we're talking about David. Right, David's gaze falls on the familiar brook uh, that that menders that 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 flows through the valley. Right. And, and, and it's waters reflecting the sun's gentle rays. And it is here that he selects not one, but five stones. These unsuming projectiles shaped by the ceaseless flow of water serve as a tangible representa uh, re uh, representation of David's meticulous preparation. And more significantly, right, his unshakable trust in God's deliverance. Right, the choice of of I'm uh, oh, sorry, the, the the choice of five stones is not incidental. In ancient warfare, a sling was a formidable and precise weapon, right? But David's decision to carry five stone goes beyond mere particular particularity, right? It speaks to the depth of faith and preparedness for unseen challenges. David did not anticipate failure, but rather he acknowledges the uncertainties of battle and embrace the necessity through readiness, right? That the, the symbolism of the five stones resonates with our own journey, reminding us that our reliance on God demands both trust and preparation. So the, these smooth stones were not merely hastily, were not merely, not hastily gathered, nor were they randomly selected. Each stone was carefully chosen, representing a commitment to face this immediate giant, right? As well as the readiness for the potential future adversaries, right? David's action teaches us that while faith in God is paramount, it does not negate the importance of diligence and preparation in the face of these challenges. The five stones serve as a tangible reminder that our trust in God is not passive surrender, but an active engagement with the, with the journey ahead, right? So David's trust in God's deliverance is 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 further exemplified by his choice his choice to face the giant without traditional armor of war of war, right? In, in a world that equates strength with physical stature and military outfit, right? David's reliance on on a sling and stone seems almost naive. Yet his trust in God's deliverance in, emboldens him to reject the conventional and embrace the in, in unconventional, right? The shepherd's confidence is, is not rooted in his own abilities, but the omnipotence of the almighty. He acknowledges that the battle is not his alone, but the Lord's, right? So this understanding of, of, of divine partnership is the cornerstone of David's character, right? As we face our own giants, Maybe doubts, fear, addiction, alcoholism, right? Or trials. You know, we need to draw inspiration from David's unwavering confidence in God's deliverance, right? You know, it's not it's it's not going to an AA meeting and going, hey, man, you know, my name's Randy and I'm an alcoholic. No, my name's Randy. I'm a recovering alcoholic. You know, you, you have that recovering in there. Why? It's because you're not an alcoholic anymore. You're just not because if you if if you depend on God's deliverance or an addict, it could be going in as an addict too. If you believe in God's deliverance, you're no longer that. That's a death. That's a death word. You know, I'm an alcoholic. No, you're not, bro. You're a recovering alcoholic. You have that thorn in your side a little bit, dude. You know what I mean? You get get over these death words, right? Because if if you believe in true deliverance, you're not an addict or an alcoholic anymore. But going to NA and AA is, is a tool that can help you stay sober. You know, I'm not downing that, right? You just got to be careful. Applying David's confidence to our challenges requires a paradigm shift, right? It calls us to move beyond relying solely on our own skills, experience, and worldly measures of strength. Instead, it beckons us to trust in the power that God that God works through our inadequacies, transforming them into instruments of his glory, right? David's triumph was not a result of human might, but the manifestation of the divine intervention, right? You know, a, a truth that echoes through the corridors of time, offering hope to confront their giants. You know, as we stand, you know, at the brink of our own battles, let us carry these lessons, you know, into our lives, right? That, that, that the preparation be meticulous, right? 
uh, uh, our trust unwavering, our confidence anchored in the assurance that like David, we face our giants, not on our own strength alone, but on the unwavering might of our God. You know, let, let this be a symbolism of the five smooth stones resonate in our hearts, like urging us uh, to trust God's deliverance and, and, and face our challenges with the assurance that the victory belongs to the Lord. You know, as the sun cast its golden glow across the valley of Elah, right? The stage is set for the climactic confrontation between a shepherd boy turned warrior, David, and the towering giant, Goliath. And in 1 Samuel verses 43 through 44, we witness a crucial moment of confrontation, clash, a clash not only of physical adversaries, but faith against mockery, doubt. Uh, uh, against conviction, right? So Goliath, draped with imposing armor, wielding formidable weapons, stands as a living embodiment of intimidation. The sheer presence commands attention, right? You know what I mean? The, 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 the voice that echoes across the valleys, right? He hurls contemptuous words at David. Goliath's mockery is, is, is not merely an exchange of insults, but it's a calculated assault on David's identity designed to instill doubt and fear. What fears are we dealing with today, guys? Can we conquer them? Of course we can, right? So, so in the face of, of, of scorn, right, David stands undeterred. Goliath's words, like, 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 a, like, like the clangor of his, of his armor, right, reverberate through the valley, echoing doubt and fear. Yet David's response is a testament to the faith that transcends the visible and the audible, right? In the face of Goliath's mockery, David's bold declaration resounds with unshakable confidence in the God that he serves. He says this, I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the is uh, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defiled, defied, right? declares David, right? His words cutting through the taunts and jeers, right? Here on the battlegrounds of words, right? Faith takes center stage. And, and David's declaration becomes a beacon of light in the midst of darkness of doubt. His trust in God of Israel transforms <coughs> mockery into an opportunity to showcase the power of God's unwavering faith or David's unwavering faith. Excuse me. Right. David's boldness is not rooted in self-assurance or, or arrogance, but in, 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 in an understanding you know, of the source of his strength. His declaration is a powerful reminder that in the face of doubt and fear, our response must echo uh, the, the confidence born out of a deep relationship with God. Goliath's mockery becomes the catalyst of David's faith to manifestation in his actions, setting the stage for a divine intervention that will defy all expectations. You know, and, and as we navigate the challenges of our own lives, we encounter our shared, our share of Goliaths, right? Maybe it be addiction, alcoholism, right? Maybe it be doubts that assail our convictions, fears that threaten to paralyze our actions, right? Or mock, mocking voices that question our worth. The lessons from David's confrontation with Goliath extends beyond the ancient battle build providing a timeless insights of our of, of our journeys today. Firstly, Goliath's mockery teaches us that that doubt and fear are formidable adversaries, right? They, they, they seek to erode our confidence, sow seeds of uncertainty and paralyze us in the face of challenges. Right. But but see, David example urges us to confront these giants head on, recognizing that our faith is the antidote to doubt and fear. And secondly, David's bold declaration serves as a model for us when we confronted, when we're confronted with doubt and mockery. Instead of succumbing to negativity, we're called to declare our trust in the God who stands with us, guys. Right? Our, our words become instruments of faith, cutting through the noise of doubt and echoing the assurance that we're not alone in our battles. 
And lastly, the confrontation between David and Goliath underscores the power of faith in action, right? David's, David's bold declaration is not a mere proclamation. It sets the stage for a miraculous intervention that defies human logic, right? When we boldly declare our trust in God, our faith becomes the catalyst of divine breakthroughs in our lives, right? The, the battle, you know, uh, in conclusion, right, the, 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 the battlefield of verses 43 through 44 offers a, a lesson on facing mockery and doubt, right? As we emulate David's unwavering faith, you know, in the face of Goliath's taunts, may we we may, may, may our own declaration echoes with confidence, right? Yeah. And, and may our trust in God lead to victories in the battles that we face, you know, in, in, in the, in the heart of the Valley of, of Elah, where the tensions between a, a shepherd, David and, the, and, and, and Goliath, right. Reaches its, its peak, right. A, a declaration resounds through the air echoing across the ages. You know, in verses forty-five through forty-seven, David's words are not uh, not not only define the essence of his faith, but it captures a timeless truth that transcends the battlefields of that day. The battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. David's declaration was not a, a mere assertion of personal strength or prowess. Right. Instead, it is a powerful acknowledgement that of that the true source of victory lies in the name of the Lord God Almighty. Right. And as he stands before Goliath, armed not with conventional weapons, but with the unwavering trust in God of Israel, David affirms that the outcome of the battle is not determined by might of the armies or the stature of the warriors but by divine authority and vote through faith. You know, he, he says this, I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of, of, of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled, defied, right? That uh, proclaims David, right? Right, right. These words, we find a key to understanding of the nature of our own battles. Like David's declaration of faith in God's name is a reminder that regardless of our adversaries we face, right? Our ultimate reliance must be on the one whose name is above all names. We can't half step this, right? We can't. The assurance of, of God's presence in our own battles resonates with David's words. Right. He doesn't confront Goliath on his own strength or human strategies, but the author, the authority of the Lord God Almighty. Right. This assurance extends beyond the physical battlefields of Eli. It, it infiltrates the spiritual battlegrounds of our lives. The moments of challenge and conflict, we draw strength from the understanding that God is not distant spectator, but an active participant in our struggles. As we navigate the complexities of our own lives, facing giants that take various forms, alcoholism, drug addiction, doubts, fear, you know, trials, David's declaration becomes a rallying cry for believers. It beckons us to shift our focus from the overwhelming nature of our challenges to the all compassing nature of God. The battle, whatever its form, ultimately belongs to the Lord. You know, it, 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 I want to encourage you guys to trust in God's victories. It becomes a natural response to David's declaration. The shepherd who triumphed over the giant invites us to align our faith with his. Recognizing that our battles are not fought in isolation, but in partnership with God. The victory of, of, of that David achieved, not by, by conventional means, but through faith in God becomes a testament to the power of divine intervention. You know, in, 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 in congregations worldwide, the message drawn from, from, from 1 Samuel 17, 45 through 47 reverberates through the, through sermons, hymns, and prayers. It resonates in the hearts of believers offering solace in times of uncertainty 
and instilling courage in the face of overwhelming odds. The battle belongs to the door. It is not just an ancient history, but it, it, it in, in the narrative, but but it, in the narrative of lives where faith transforms the ordinary into the extraordinary. And, and you, you know what I'm saying? As we stand before our own Goliaths, whether they be internal struggle or external adversaries, let us echo the declaration. Let us declare our trust in the name of the God, uh, uh, in the name of the Lord Almighty God, right? Recognizing that the battles that we face are, are, are not ours alone. May this declaration become a source of strength, assurance, and unwavering faith, you know, inspiring us to trust in God's victory in every, every aspect of our lives. Sorry, I need to pour some more water. You know what I mean? You know, as as we journey through this narrative of David and Goliath, you know, um, the echoes of the ancient story reverberate uh, with with relevance for believers in the present day. The battle, the battlefield of evil seems seems it it, it may seem a little bit uh, distant, right? Right, but the giant, but but the the giants that we encounter in our lives are are no less formidable. We find applications that resonate across the ages, guiding us to identify and confronting our giants, right? In our contemporary existence, you know? You know, just as David was faced with a tangible giant, Goliath, believers today confront their own giants you know, challenges that loom large and threaten to overpower our faith. These giants can manifest in doubts that assail our convictions, fears that paralyze our actions, and trials that seem insurmountable. In the in the first step in applying these lessons from David's encounter is the identification of these giants. In the hustle and bustle of our modern life, it's it's easy to overlook the giants that that quietly lurk in the shadows. You know, the pressures of work, family, relationship, or societal expectation can become giants, right? That if if unaddressed, hinder our spiritual growth, right? Recognizing that these challenges require introspection and willingness to acknowledge in areas uh, where, where we may be facing an adversary, right? David's choice to, to face Goliath with, with, without conventional armor of war symbolizes an unconventional faith in God. You know, uh, believers are called to embrace a faith that goes beyond the norms of this world. In a society that often values tangible solutions for immediate results, our faith in God promises uh, may may faith in God's promises may may seem unconventional. Yet it is precisely this kind of faith that transformed the ordinary believers into extraordinary instruments of God's grace. Embracing unconventional faith involves trusting in God's timing, even when the world urges us to act hastily. It means relying on, the, on, on, on prayer and seeking divine guidance, even when the secular wisdom points us in, a, in different directions. David's reliance on a sling and stones rather than the unexpected, than the expected armor and sword challenges us to question our reliance on conventional wisdom and to trust in God's ways, man, you know, which may lead us down unexpected paths. See, the, the giants that David faced were, were just physical, right? They, they weren't just physical guys. You know, they, they were accompanied by doubt and fear, right? Believers grapple with doubt about their faith, their worth, and God's plans in their lives. The application today, uh, to today's believers is confronted these doubts and fears with unwavering trust in God. You know, when, when doubt creeps in, right, we're called to declare, as David did, that the battle belongs to the Lord. Our trust in God's deliverance becomes the antidote of doubt. Our reliance on his presence dispels the fear that seeks to paralyze us. The story of David and Goliath uh, challenges believers to overcome the giants of doubt and fear with the weapon of trusting God's promises. 
right? Our, 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 in our fast paced life and ever changing world, lessons from David's encounter with Goliath serve as a, a compass for believers navigating the complexities of their own lives, identifying giants, embracing unconventional faith, and overcoming doubt and fear, not by mere theological concepts, but by practical applications that transforms the way we approach challenges. You know, as, as today's believers, let's draw inspiration from the shepherd, right, who, who faced a giant with a sling and stones, trusting in the name of the Lord Almighty. May we identify the giants in our own lives and embrace unconventional faith that buys worldly expectations and overcome fear with unwavering trust in God. And in doing so, we step into the arena of our own battles, confident like David, right? You know, we face our giants, not with strength alone, but by the victorious name of the Lord. Amen. So, uh, I, you know, tomorrow we're going to be touching the last part of 17. Um, and uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this. I know I am. And, you know, and, and um, you know, it's just awesome that you guys are here. And I want to thank you for joining us, you know, um, May God richly bless your day, man, you know, um, and uh, guys, uh, again, thank you for being here. Um, let's pray out. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this time. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you do. Lord, we just ask God that you just continue to do a mighty work in us. Bless our, bless our hands and feet today as we go to work, school, or whatever we're doing. Lord, and, and may you just you bless those that are watching on Facebook and YouTube and bless those on our podcasting platforms. Lord, thank you for the opportunity that we get to learn your word. And Lord, let us be the ambassadors of, of, of your son, Lord, that you've created us to be. Thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. All right, guys. God bless you. And you guys have a awesome, awesome, awesome day.